turning your Bibles to the book of Matthew in the 15th chapter. <clears throat> we want to talk a little bit this morning, read some about uh, the Pharisees and uh, the scribes and all how they uh, depended upon uh, works and one of them was, uh, and I believe it was on the heart because they, uh, they had they done it, uh, hand washing. And uh, they criticized all those that didn't participate in it. And uh, that's what we want to try to read on this morning a little bit. In Matthew Gospel, in the 15th chapter, Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the traditions? Now notice this word traditions because it's nothing but of man. Right. The traditions of the elders. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Now, would if you would, turn with me to the book of Mark, the 7th chapter. Verse 1. This was the question that was asked to Jesus, and we want to continue on it. Mark gives us a little bit better, uh, some more information on it. But in verse 1, then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of the, his disciples eat with defile, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. And so here's 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 their problem. Uh, back in uh, when the and we studied some of this in Adam's class. Back when they had they had built the temple uh, and they made it out of badger skin and all this. They had a lavender there. That's what they called, and it was for Aaron and his two sons to wash their hands and their feet in prior to making an atonement or a sin offering. And this is where they followed this, they kept up with this, and they, they kept on doing this same procedure over and over until they counted it as a holy work as mm -hmm. for them. It was not for them, it was for Aaron and his two sons and as they made the atonement in the tabernacle. But this is where this thing uh, originated from. And so we see here that he, the, uh, they, they called it here in, uh, in, uh, in verse 3, uh, for the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, behold, beholding, the tradition of the elders, and the tradition was, like I said, made, uh, it was something that uh, people create, and somebody else comes along and says, yeah, so-and-so did this a hundred years ago, so we need to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And it's the same this morning as it was back then. People are still depending on works. Right. And uh, uh, because uh, even of baptism, when Moses baptized G uh, John the Baptist uh, baptized Jesus, listen, this thing with baptism has has got its place in so many hearts uh, of of salvation, right. a necessity uh, for salvation, and all that the world are doing is they're neglecting what Jesus Christ told them, taught them about grace. And so here again, these Pharisees are asking uh, Jesus, why do your uh, followers uh, eat off time without washing their hands? Well, this is what Jesus told them. And when uh, then the uh, uh, and look, notice in verse uh, four, and when they come from the marketplace, except they wash. They eat not, and many other things there be which they have received to hold, received to hold, as the washing of cups, pots, 
brazen vessels, and of tablets. So if you look back in Exodus 20, you can read that again, and this is included in that in that procedure of washing hands and feet, and, and they made sure that all the vessels were clean, that they carried the uh, the uh, blood or whatever it was, but they, they are, they're following up the whole thing. Then, the, in verse 5, then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the, to the, the traditions of the elders? Now, uh, he says, but eat with unwashed hands. So here, here is their here is their complaint. Here is their gripe to Jesus, and he answered and said unto them, Well, hath Isaiah prophesied of you, hypocrites, as it is written, The people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Now Amen. they would go around like even uh, it's mentioned in there about the Pharisees making the long prayers. And he says, here you honor me with your lips. Well, they were Satan's disciples. They, 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 didn't, know, they didn't know what salvation was. All they wanted to do was get the, the pats on the back of the people. And, uh, and they would uh, uh, go around in uh, uh, long robes and, and making all of these prayers and, and uh, washing their hands every time that they you know every time that they uh, uh, wanted to eat anything they washed their hands well uh, you know it was a pretense mm -hmm. and it was a tradition and it right. was something that they held to and they criticized Jesus disciples because they did this now the thing that that I want you to see here is now notice <clears throat> in verse 7 how be it in vain do they worship me teaching for doctrine the commandment of men. So here's Jesus saying to them, but their heart is far from me, and how be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. And that is what is being taught today, that is what is going on in the biggest part of your so-called churches, is right. that they are teaching men's traditions, and they're saying, hey, you need to work out your own salvation. That's what the Scripture said. But listen, they're, they're using this in altogether a different way. They're trying to uh, get the glory of men by going and visiting widows and orphans and, and things of this nature. And they're, they're warning the, the praise of mankind. And these Pharisees and scribes would do the same thing in order to uh, have the praise of man. Now, he says here in verse, uh, verse 8, For lay, laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the traditions of man. So they're saying, he's saying, you, you, don't, you don't follow the commandment of what God says about uh, what you're supposed to do, but he says you're following the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things. And he said unto them, Full well ye... Reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own traditions. Mm. And here again is the same situation in the biggest part of our United States. And they are teaching, they are teaching these stinking works right. for salvation. They're teaching that, that is a must. Uh, baptism is a must. Good works is a must. Uh, tithing is a must. And listen. These things, we do them because the Lord asks us to do these things, especially tithing. And uh, it's, it's very uh, sensible for us to wash our hands when they're dirty before we eat. But we don't do it because it is a commandment of God right. to say, say. But we do it because to keep germs out of our body and to keep ourselves clean. And uh, as uh, even even the pots and the pans that we cook with, we do wash them. But it's not it's not because it's essential for salvation. But it's because the old pots would get stuck with grease and stuff like this, and eventually they'd get to stinking, and they would. Do, and so they are they're using something like that to say, hey, I'm being justified in the eyes of God because I'm, I'm keeping my pots clean, I'm keeping my hands clean, and it's a must, I've got to do it, I've got to do it. And it, that's what is wrong with our country today, right? is they're listening to these people preach uh, and teach that the traditions of man, 
which they are not they are not a necessity for salvation but they are a, 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 a foolish act if you do it in for that reason and the thing of it is listen even even as we tithe and we believe that the Lord is pleased in us tithing we don't do that to, to keep our salvation we don't do that for uh, uh, anything except that he says that we need to do it and that tenth part is his and we don't want to Amen. rob him and the, the monies that we put in the box is, uh, is a tenth and God has blessed us he has blessed us beyond all words even in the church here but we do that because that we want to see the church have money to buy and to take care of itself and to help others. And again, also, it's pleasing to God. Mm -hmm. And so we don't do it. We don't do it because uh, we, we have that uh, to, to keep our salvation or to keep us saved. We don't do those things. And so here, uh, some of your churches will tell these these people, hey, if you don't give this and if you don't give that, uh, I can't pray you out of hell. Listen, it's 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 tradition, people. Amen. It, it come it come all the way down, and uh, the old priests, the old Pharisees, and all this, they talk the same thing to those people. And so here again, uh, in verse ten, notice for Moses said, "Honor thy father and thy mother, who." So curses father or mother, let him die the death. Now back over in, in Matthew's gospel, uh, he said he, he talked to these Pharisees and, that, and he says, uh, you don't honor your father and your right. mother. You don't honor them. And you can see over in the Old Testament there in Exodus, I believe it is, it's one of the first commandments that God gave to Moses to bring down and present to the people. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. And they did not do it. They they told them, hey, uh, because because I am born into you, into your life, I have the freedom to do whatever I want to, and I don't even have to help you uh, make a living or help you to keep the house clean or help you to do anything. It's a, it's a gift. And so here again, he said in verse 10, For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curse father or mother, let him die the death. And if you want to read a little bit more, we'll actually turn over to Exodus 20 and verse 12, and over in Deuteronomy. But he, but ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corban, that is to say a gift. And that's what they were doing. That's what they were doing to, to their parents. By what by whatsoever thou mightest be pro, 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 profited by me, he shall be free. In other words, whatever I do, uh, I'm free to do whatever I want to do. Hmm. And uh, and that's what they were. That's one of the things that that Jesus was criticizing them because they were saying they were saying, why do your disciples wash their hands uh, or don't wash their hands when they eat? And he asked them the question also. Why do you dishonor your father and your mother? Now, Jesus had scripture that Moses had brought this from God off of the mountain and, and, and the commandments and said, honor your father and mother. And they didn't do it. And they didn't teach them to do it. But here they're, they're grumbling and griping about someone not washing their hands as often as they, as they eat. So he said, uh, in verse 12, And ye suffer him no more to do all for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your traditions which ye have delivered, and many such like things do you. And so he's saying, hey, these traditions that you're practicing, you're, 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 you're breaking God's commandments. Mm. And this is this is something this morning uh, that there's you can look you can look in the, in the in the years past so many things that people are doing is they're celebrating days of the year right that has no no reason to be it don't mean nothing and you see your signs all along the road all the time 
it, it's uh, uh, about the Easter. Uh, Jesus is the Easter, or Jesus is the reason for Easter. Jesus is the reason for Christmas. And I told my wife this morning, I said, I sure would like to have one of the big signs. They got one over here, it's about five foot long. And uh, I said, I cut that tiny thing off at the top and just have Jesus is the reason. And But they won't do it that way, no. They want to add some bunny rabbit to right. it or some uh, Easter uh, egg to it or something like this. And then they come back and say, Jesus, is, here's the same what, what they were doing there with the Pharisees and the, and the scribes and all. They were washing their hands and saying, Jesus is the reason for me washing my hands. Mm. But listen, people, these things... These things are out of control. Amen. They're out of control. And, you know, as I was saying this this morning, reading the Psalms, you know, there's so many words in some of those Psalms, hey, that we need to we need to embrace Lord and mercy. We need to we need to think about them and and, 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 and we need to use our life in a way that would be pleasing to the Lord. Amen. Because, listen. He's, he, he wants to go on just a little bit more, and I, I'll, I'll read it just in a minute about, about the file, uh, that much going in. But he said here, uh, uh, let me read it again. But ye say, if a man shall say to Nos 12, and ye suffer him no more to do all for it. I'm going to read that. Make the word of God none effect through your tradition. I read that. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken or listen unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that enters into him can defile him. Now, he's saying this morning that there's nothing that you can put in your mouth right. that you can eat or you can go down to the hog pen and you can get you a big bottle of that dirt and what will in your hands, but then don't defile you. Amen. Now why why did he say this? People, we're defiled already. Mm -hmm. There's nothing this morning that you can do that will defile your body as far as sin and make it any worse. Because it was born defiled, it will stay defiled, it will die defiled. And the thing of it is, uh, in other words, the only way that that sin can be taken care of uh, for the flesh is to die. Mm -hmm. That is the payment for sin. Death, death is, death is, sin is for death. And so, he's telling these people, hey, you can't defile your body because it's already defiled. And so here he says, there is nothing from without a man, nothing that enters into him can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. Amen. And so from within where the Spirit is, comes out this haughtiness comes out these sinful remarks these these thoughts these evil things that is what is defiling the body that's what keeps it defiled and listen we need to try to keep it as under control and I, and I know I know this flesh you can't control it but you can try to keep it under con uh, under control but listen it's sinful and these people here that were worrying about washing their hands before they get a little dirt on them and would defile their bodies. Listen, they're looking at their fleshly bodies, people, as something that's saved. Mm -hmm. And you cannot tell 90% of this world that their bodies are wicked, right. their bodies can't be saved because they won't believe it. They've heard grandma and grandpa from a hundred years back saying, hey, uh, I hadn't sinned in 20 years. Well, listen, that's making the body sinless. But people, our bodies is sinful, and the only thing that we can do is try to pray and ask the Lord to help us with these things because they're going to come out. Amen. 
they're going to come out and listen. Uh, uh, it, it, it don't make no difference how 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 much you you fight it. There will be some things that will come out, and and this body is not perfect. And so the only that's that's one of the things this morning with with uh, the baptism for salvation. And they said, well, Jesus was baptized. Well, yes, he was, but Jesus came and he was perfect. Amen. And so listen, he didn't need he didn't need baptism. To be to be perfect, he was perfect already, and so that eliminates that eliminates baptism for salvation or any part of salvation. It is identification, and that's all it is. And so these things that that Jesus was talking to these Pharisees and Sadducees about, listen, uh, they were they were traditions, and uh, they uh, just wanted to uh, uh, show their. Uh, their power, if they had any, or uh, or show uh, that they were greater than the disciples, and uh, and that's why that they come to Jesus tempting him. Like so, here again in verse seventeen uh, or verse fifteen, there is nothing within without a man that entered into him to defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are they that defile him. Now listen, if any man here have ear to hear. Let him hear. Amen. So this morning, uh, the Bible says that the things that I'm reading here, not so much as much as I'm saying, but what I'm reading here is true. And listen, if you've got an ear, and it's not one of these that you see on my face or my head, but listen, it's a spiritual ear. Amen. And if you if you've got a spiritual ear, you listen to that. Because it's true, it's what God said. And so he said, And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, Are you so without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatsoever entereth from within entereth into a man? Do you do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into a man, it cannot defile him, because it entered not into his heart, but into his belly, and goeth out into the draught, purging all meat. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceedeth evil thoughts, Adultery, fornication, murder, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eyes, blaspheming, pride, and foolishness. Amen. These are the things that come out that defiles the man. It's not what goes in. But listen, the body loves it. Mm -hmm. The body is sinful and it's, it, it's a child of the devil. Uh, in, in the respects that it's not been saved mm -hmm. but and it's evil and it has these evil thoughts and the only thing that we have to counteract that is that we have, that have been saved have the spirit within us warring against this and trying to keep it under control and so that's a lot of times why that we have these awful thoughts. That's the reason why we said, <clears throat> "Wish I had thought that. Wish I hadn't said that. Wish I." But listen, that's it, people. And uh, these 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 people here that that were washing their uh, hands and all this and doing all of these, we've still got it. And uh, you can uh, if you if you if you try very hard and go out and uh, witness to people, they they'll say, "Yes, I'm saved." And you ask them. What, how would you say, well, I keep this, I do this, I do that, and uh, I think God understands my condition and my position, and I'm doing the best I can. But I will wind up in a terrible devil's hell. Right. And uh, that's the way it is. And so this morning, you that are, we that are saved, thank the Lord for it. Amen. Praise Him because... Uh, that's that's what it's all about, and uh, what I've told you here this morning uh, uh, needs to be it needs to be told. 
because there's so much falsehood going on out there, and and people people just they they will swallow that. They will swallow uh, works for salvation because it's something that's been told a lot time and time again. It's something that they can do, mm-hmm. and then they can turn around and say, "I did this, and I did this, and I I did this," and and just all oh, just pat themselves on the back. And all the time, they're deceived. Right. They're deceived. So anyway, this is the lesson for today. And I uh, appreciate you listening. And I uh, ask you to continue praying for me that I might uh, be able to read some scripture to, uh, to the church. Thank you all.